today I'd like to talk about cultivation of one-pointedness in mind. When you first begin meditation practice, we often find our minds surprisingly distracted and restless. How was your meditation today, this morning? And one of our, our meditation retreat participants recently mentioned having thoughts popping up every second during the entire meditation session. We know that it's not only her. <laughs> meditation doesn't make our minds uneasy. Rather, it simply reveals the constant chatter of our mind. When we use our six sense organs, eye, ear, nose, tongue, and body, and mind, it consumes our vital energy, which in oriental medicine is called the water energy, the watery energy. So if we continually use them for seeing, watching, listening, or thinking about something, the water energy in the body is depleted. It's like a vehicle consuming its gas or a lamp burning its wick. As a result, we lose the balance both in our mind and body. We need to refuel and recharge them. Psychologists Matthew Killingsworth and Daniel Gilbert of Harvard University did interesting research. They contacted more than 2,000 volunteers at random intervals. They asked the volunteers how happy they were, what they were currently doing, and whether they were thinking about their current activity or about something else. This research revealed that how often our minds leave the present moment and where they tend to go is a better predictor of our happiness than activities in which we are engaged. This research concluded that a wandering mind is an unhappy mind. We tend to feel happier when our mind is present and focused, even during mundane tasks such as dishwashing. So if you feel anxious for any reason, start doing any work for 20 minutes and start doing any work and really focus on it like for 20 minutes. It could be cleaning your room or your bathroom or organizing a drawer. After 20 minutes, you will feel much happier, calmer, stable, and even more confident. A wandering mind does not just affect our level of happiness. More importantly, the constant mental noise deludes our mind and prevents us from seeing clearly. Just as an unstable camera captures a fuzzy picture, an unfocused mind can't perceive situations clearly. The problem is our minds are bombarded by enormous amounts of information every day. And with the development of internet content and smartphones, this has worsened. Our brains do not have a single moment of pause or rest. Anyone who carry your smartphone to the bathroom? They swing from one thought to another like a monkey. We need to cultivate the one pointedness of our mind. One pointedness is a state where our minds are not distracted and entirely absorbed in the object of focus. It means being entirely present and awake to the current experience. 
It doesn't mean that we focus solely on one thing. For example, if you take a walk with a one-pointed mind, your focus is on each step. No. And knowing exactly where we are heading. If a branch protrudes from a tree, we are aware of it and avoid it. So one-pointedness doesn't mean that you are just looking down onto your feet while walking. So this is more like open awareness. One-pointedness is a natural state of our minds and is an essential quality that we very much need to restore. This is why practice of meditation is crucial. In one Buddhism, practice falls under two categories. The practice of time at rest and the practice of time in action. Meditation is the tool for time at rest. So let me first talk about it. From the methods of sitting meditation in one Buddhism, Dharma book, it says, you know, gently bring your focus down into the tanjan, you know, our lower abdomen, without dwelling on even one thought. Do not neglect then and there to pull yourself together and bring the energy to rest. So whenever we realize that we wander off in thoughts, when you practice meditation, we just recognize that fact and we turn to the tanjan or to your breath. In this way, we train our minds to constantly reconnect to the present moment and enhance concentration. It sounds easy. But actually doing this can be very challenging. We have become so accustomed to our mental noise that just being present and sit with it feels kind of awkward. We feel like we should be thinking something all the time. We constantly look for something else to direct our minds from now. To deal, to deal with these thoughts, we must realize that none of these thoughts are real. As the Diamond Sutra says, the past is ungraspable, the present is ungraspable, the future is ungraspable. The only truth is each moment as you breathe now. So if you have thoughts about the past, anything you may have left undone, or somebody you offended, or somebody hurt you, for example, you can gently remind yourself that it's gone. And what's done cannot be undone. If the thoughts are about worries about the future, you could tell yourself, it has not come yet. The moment you are aware of your thoughts, you are no longer attached to them, and they lose their power. None of these thoughts serve you, especially during meditation. It is all in vain to play with any thought, either wholesome or unwholesome. To hold on to something that is ungraspable is called delusion. I know some thoughts are really tempting. You may even feel like you should be holding on to them. It's like you try hard 
to hold on to a branch, you know, not to fall from a cliff. And when you can stand anymore and release them, you, know, you fall to the ground. But what you actually find is that it was just a few feet off the ground. Now you feel relieved and you take good rest. Likewise, it is okay to let go of your thoughts and take refuge in the present moment, sitting with your breath. And every morning, before I begin morning meditation practice here, I tell myself, I choose to spend this very special period of time to sit with my true nature and be with the only truth at this moment, which is now. And I make up my mind with this resolution. I choose to not play with thoughts. Then it's easier to let go of my thoughts that pop up during the meditation. And let me now talk about how we can cultivate the one-pointedness of our mind during time in action. Thoughts that arise during meditation are often linked to our attachment. So it is an equally important practice to live our daily lives in a way that avoids cultivating lingering thoughts or attachment. Taking one action at a time is very effective practice for this. This implies letting go of all fears, worries, and memories that no longer serve you. And simply focus on what you need to do at this time. Sometimes we need to use our thinking mind, right? We need to use our mind, thinking mind, for setting goals or making plans. Having a clear goal and working on it makes the mind calm and peaceful because we know where we are heading. We also use our thinking mind for reviewing what we have done for improvement. And for other various practical purposes, such as remembering things and being on time for an appointment. However, I would say maybe 80 to 90% of most people's thinking is not only repetitive and unnecessary, but also harmful. It mostly consists of regret from the past, fear of the future, unhealthy comparison to others, blaming others and blaming yourself, and so on. It causes a serious leakage of vital and mental energy and prevents us from acting appropriately, appropriately in many situations. So after you use your mind for necessary things, then immediately return and leave the present moment. Do what you need to do, one thing at a time. We can do this, right? Anyone can do this. If there is something that you should be doing, but are not doing it, get up and do it now. Or choose to accept your inactivity or laziness at this moment. That can be also be your choice. It is different than you just feel guilty and blame yourself while being lazy. If it's a conscious choice to be lazy at this moment, you will soon come out of it. Many people procrastinate 
because of fear. Fear of failure. Or having too many what if thoughts. I myself am one of those people. Back in high school, a long, long time ago, when I had to study for the exam, I suddenly felt like reading books. I would pick up a bunch of books and magazines from the bookshelf and pile them up <laughs> on my desk and spend the night before an exam. Do you know what I mean? No, it's not only me. My mind deluded me. If you read these books, you will feel better. You will feel less anxious. But it's not. It's always ended up causing more suffering. If you find you're avoiding reality and not doing things that you need to do now, recognize that your mind is projecting itself into an imaginary future and creating unreal fear. Ask yourself what you should do now. Or maybe within the next five minutes. What should I do? Not tomorrow or next week or next year. It is very helpful if you break tasks into smaller and manageable steps. And focus on each step one at a time. And if you want to change a situation you are in, and drop the negative chatter that your mind has created around the situation, it serves no purpose. Instead, take any net. In, instead, take any necessary action. It can be either you know, to stop doing what you are doing or express fully what you feel to the person of your concern. Take any action that is necessary. And once you are engaged in any task, focus on the task and complete one at a time. Do not do multitask. And afterward, let the mind be as empty as the sky. In reality, the sustaining focus for even 15 minutes it can be challenging. I sometimes set the timer for 25 minutes for doing certain tasks. And during the 25 minutes, I get distracted several times. Whenever I get distracted, instead of jumping into them, I make note of them and return to the task. And after 25 minutes, I view my notes and discover I'm not interested in them anymore. This practice turns your work into meditation. Working meditation. Just as you come back to your tanjan, come back to your breath, you come back to your task. This practice is actually easier and more enjoyable than sitting meditation. <laughs> because you are performing an actual task. So let me conclude my talk today with Master Sotesan's Dharma words. He said, Ordinary people consider practice to consist of always sitting quietly in meditation and reading scriptures and do not realize that there exists a practice conducted throughout everyday life. How then can they be said that they have learned the great dharma of practice in both internal and external absorption and quiescence? Generally, the great practice involves initially inquiry into the principle of one's true nature and realize in the realm that is originally free from attachment. And then in everyday life, to perform actions 
that are free from attachment. If a practitioner in doing any one thing does not become distracted by something else, this is in effect the practice of one-pointedness of mind. May we all realize our true nature that is free from attachment and bring mindful attention to each task just as you focus on each breath during meditation. In this way, may we empower our minds to create our lives we want. Thank you for listening.